History can appear rather abstract at times. Reading about it in textbooks can often make it seem remote and inconsequential. Visiting historical sites or talking to those who experienced historical events can provide a powerful connection to history. But we cannot always access such sites and people, nor do they give a full understanding of history. Archival sources fill this gap by giving us crucial insight into historical events. Textual sources allow us to better understand historical events and how people at the time participated in and interpreted those events. Archival visual sources, such as photographs, let us see things as they were in the past, aiding our understanding of how people once saw them. Archives connect us with history in a way that secondary sources and textbooks often struggle to. The University of Pittsburgh has a wide selection of archival sources, many of which are part of the Historic Pittsburgh Collection, located at the Archive Service Center. The Historic Pittsburgh Archive holds sources relating to Pittsburgh and, more broadly, Western Pennsylvania history. Actually visiting the archive gave me a greater appreciation for the history it preserves and the stories it tells. The Archive Service Center, from both the outside and the inside, is a rather nondescript building. Its plain design disguises the diverse wealth of knowledge contained within its brick walls. The building houses thousands and thousands of sources including photographs, maps, letters, audio files, and various other types of documentation. While visiting the archives, we were allowed to see the room containing the physical sources. The room was filled with seemingly endless rows of boxes, each packed with hundreds of documents. The value of the knowledge contained in that room alone is immeasurable. During our visit, the archivists laid out several stations for us, at each station using archival sources to tell a historical story. The stories covered a wide variety of topics such as urban planning, environmental politics, and labor history. A table covered with old black and white photographs caught my eye. These photographs appeared to tell a tale of prosperity and poverty, creation and destruction. One of the archivists let me know that this station was about the Hill District. The photographs I saw, as shown here, showcased how the redevelopment of the 1950s affected the neighborhood. I found these images particularly striking, as they tell a story of the hill in a way that cannot be communicated through writing. To convey the power of archival sources, I will tell you the story of the hill district using photographs from the historic Pittsburgh archive to complement my narrative. For those that don't know, the hill district lies between downtown Pittsburgh and Oakland. The neighborhood has a long history of ethnic diversity, featuring Jewish and Italian culture alongside African American art, music, business, and sports. The Hill District emerged in the 1840s, as workers began moving into newly built affordable housing in the area. While the neighborhood was very racially diverse until the 1960s, by the 1880s most black people in Pittsburgh lived in the Hill District. With the Hill designated as the center of black life in Pittsburgh, it continued to grow throughout the years swelling in size particularly during the Great Migration of the early 1900s. As the Hill District grew, it cultivated a level of prosperity rarely seen among black communities at the time, featuring numerous successful black-owned enterprises. For example, the neighborhood was home to the Pittsburgh Courier, one of the leading black newspapers in the entire United States. The Hill District also birthed one of the finest black baseball teams in the Negro Leagues, the Pittsburgh Crawfords. This photograph shows a very early Crawfords team in 1926 before they went big, and this is a photograph of Josh Gibson, the famous catcher who played for the Crawfords. At the time this picture was taken, he was actually playing for the Homestead Grays, another black team from Pittsburgh. The Hill boasted the first black-owned Major League Baseball diamond, named Greenlee Field after its owner, the prominent black businessman Gus Greenlee. Greenlee, pictured here on the far left, held a lot of influence around the Hill District. Along with owning the Crawfords and his own baseball field, Gus also owned the Crawford Grill, a popular hub of community activity, business, and music. Not only influential in terms of business, sports, and journalism, the Hill was also a center of black music, forging famous jazz musicians such as Billy Eckstein. Clearly, the Hill District was a hub for black culture, achievement, and art during the first half of the 20th century. Unfortunately, the story of the Hill District is made remarkable not only by its rise, but by its fall. As Pittsburgh emerged from the Second World War into the post-war period, a group of wealthy residents allied with Democratic Mayor David L. Lawrence to implement their plans to revitalize the city. This process was labeled the Pittsburgh Renaissance, and it greatly altered the city. There were many positive aspects of this process, such as introducing smog controls and building new infrastructure. 
But not all parts of the city were serviced equally. As part of the Renaissance, Pittsburgh's Urban Renewal Authority decided to demolish about one-third of the Hill District in order to build a new arena designed for concerts, shows, and other events. Along with building this new civic arena, the government promised to construct enough affordable housing to rehome the thousands of residents the project would displace. The clearance of the Hill District began in May 1956, as the government demolished homes, businesses, churches, and other important local institutions. The Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church, the first AME church west of the Allegheny Mountains, and an important hub of the Hill District was torn down. This photograph, taken in the 1950s, depicts the church as it had been since it was built in 1906. After the demolition, the congregation was forced to worship at another church for two years before permanently relocating. The demolition process was haphazard and badly planned, as residents were often not well informed when demolitions would take place. Worst of all, the government did not build nearly enough new housing, leaving thousands of residents displaced and homeless. The Civic Arena, finished in 1961, did not bring in as much business as was expected, and the Hill District continued to struggle. As this photograph shows, the Civic Arena was very visually distinct from the rest of the neighborhood. This visual difference hints at how isolated the venue was from the Hill District. The residents of the Hill often were uninterested in events hosted by the arena, such as hockey games, or they couldn't afford the expensive admission prices. So, when the city government suggested further redevelopment of the neighborhood during the 1960s, residents organized to prevent the further destruction of the hill. The neighborhood was also battered by the civic unrest and racial tension that exploded following the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. in 1968. Following these events, the city government and the city as a whole truly turned their back on the hill district. New highways were constructed around the neighborhood, cutting the hill off from surrounding communities, and allowing Pittsburghers to bypass the hill when getting around the city. Commerce in the hill district dried up as residents left for other neighborhoods, and white Pittsburghers avoided the hill in favor of other, easier-to-access commercial areas such as the Strip District. While the history of the Hill District can't be changed, the neighborhood's story continues. Efforts are being made to revitalize the hill and reintegrate it with the rest of Pittsburgh. For example, a new grocery store is being built in the neighborhood, and a park has been constructed over an interstate, once again connecting the Hill District to downtown Pittsburgh. These developments remind us that, despite the hardships it still faces, the community keeps moving forward, with a brighter future on the horizon. The photographs used in this video, which are only a small selection from the much larger Historic Pittsburgh archive, really helped tell the story of the Hill District. They are the only way to see the neighborhood as it once was. Textual descriptions are also important, but I find visuals a particularly striking way to show the height that the hill once reached. Seeing the photos presented at the Archive Service Center gave me a new appreciation for the site itself. The rows and rows of boxes full of old documents took on a new meaning. Each one of those boxes contains a multitude of stories. Each new source reveals a fragment of some story ultimately as deep and interesting as that of the Hill District. Walking away from the archives that day, I was reminded of the value provided by archival sources. They give me, and hopefully you, a deeper feeling of connection to the history around me, allowing me to better understand the world as it once was.